In this tutorial, we will be covering the basic interface of Fritzing. Fritzing is a software tool that allows for the documentation of microcontrolling prototypes and facilitates the manufacturing of custom printed circuit boards. The way I will be using Fritzing for the remainder of the tutorials is simply as a way to document the circuits we will be making and bridge the physical and digital platforms we are working with. Fritzing is a pretty intuitive program to use and you should get a hang of the software fairly quickly. After the welcome page, there are three main views within Fritzing. Those are the breadboard view, which we will be using the most, the schematic view, or electrical diagram view, and the printed circuit board view, which I will be discussing in further detail later on. For the remainder of the tutorials, I will be focusing on the breadboard view, as it is where we will be doing most of our work and replicates the hardware which we will be using to make our Arduino circuits. At the top of the program there is a pull-down menu with your typical functions. In the file pull-down menu, we can find the open and save commands, examples, and an export function. Using this function, you can export your circuits as PNG files, JPEG images, or PDF files for any of your presentation purposes. In the edit pull-down menu, you have your typical cut, copy, and paste commands, as well as your preferences. Here you have the view settings such as window size, switching between views, and the ability to turn on and off layers. In the window pull-down menu, you have settings for the dock components on the right side of your screen, and of course you have the help pull-down menu for any additional resources you may need. On the right hand side of the screen you will see the parts menu. This is a series of libraries where you can find parts that mimic their real world substitutes. There are various bins that have parts for most microcontrollers on the market and hardware such as LEDs, servo motors, LCD screens, and other components. To use these components, just drag and drop them onto the breadboard screen where you can move them around and draw wires between various pins. The inspector menu is where you will be able to see detailed information about components you have selected and change any variable options. There is also a history and layer toolbar that works similar to most programs such as Photoshop or Illustrator. You can go back and forward with your commands by clicking on the history toolbar and you can hide and show different layers by selecting the check marks in the layers toolbar. In the editing window there are a few more commands at the bottom to make notes and to rotate your components. One last thing I want to show you is if you have a wire you can create a kink in it by double clicking and moving that section. You can also get rid of that kink by double clicking on it. If you'd like to curve your wires you can hold control, hover over the wire and then move it. To show the flow of current from the wires you have connected Simply hold on a pin. That will show you how the current flows between your board and your parts. For the next series of tutorials, I've created a bin of parts that already contain all the components we will be working with. I've done this just for ease of access, but all these parts can be found in the Fritzing program. To import the bin, click on the drop-down menu beside the name of the bins and select Import. Navigate to where the Ryerson ASC755 Digital Tool FZBZ file is located and select Open. You should now be able to access the bin with all the required components for the rest of the tutorials at the bottom of the bin list. That's the end to this quick intro into the Fritzing software. I will be using the software to show you how to set up various circuits in the next few tutorials. You can follow those tutorials either by using the software if you don't have the hardware, or, if you have the hardware, you can make and test the circuits with me as we move along.